Hey folks, it's Fridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Ravenport. We are racing along enthusiastically harvesting our oats and we are going to be turning round very carefully, ever so, ever so carefully, driving on the crop as we do it. Right, uh, we've got also the beastie up here. This one is racing up and down the field as well, doing the cultivating. As you all know, I was talking to you extensively last week about some potential changes coming to the channel. And those, all of the feedback from that is still coming in. Uh, it's very important to me to get as much feedback as I possibly can from as many people as possible. So I'm not going to be announcing any changes just yet. I need to finish getting all of that feedback and then I need to go through it and I need to have a look. And I need to come up with a plan that best fits both myself, the channel, I say both, fits all of the above, uh, myself, my channel, my wife and my children. Um, all of these things play a, a crucial factor in deciding what exactly we're going to do and how we're going to proceed with it. I'm not going to say anything at the moment. I'm not going to make any announcements about it. There should be, though, at the moment, there should be a competition that should now be open. You should be in the, 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 the you should be in with a chance of winning one of three copies of Farming Simulator 19. Three, not one, not two, not. I was going to say not three, uh, not one, not two, but three copies of Farming Simulator 19. Uh, one prize per customer, and you have the opportunity to go and win said game. So if you don't yet have this game and you would like the opportunity to win it, make sure that you enter into that competition. There'll be a competition video floating around on the channel somewhere. It's probably, I, 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 by this point, by the time you're watching this one, I've probably done something sensible. I know, I know, I know it's probably going to be a shock to me as well, doing something sensible, but I probably will have done something sensible like... Um, pin it to the beginning of the channel or something like that on the main channel page so it's easy to find. Uh, the winner will be announced on Wednesday the 13th of March which is my birthday. So I will announce the winner. I will give away the copies. I will give you stuff for my birthday. This is how it's going to work here on this channel. I'm giving you stuff for my birthday. Uh, so on my birthday I will announce the winners and then you will need to get hold of me but we will discuss that in the actual giveaway video. And then possibly at the end of this week, um, maybe on into next week now by this point, um, and I'm, I'm, talk I'm not talking my time, um, just ignore, just assume that I'm talking to you when you're watching this video roughly on the day that it goes live. So next week for you. If there are any significant changes going to be coming to the channel, that's when I will be making some announcements and possibly starting to enact some changes. Uh, but that's all to come further down the line, so don't worry about it at the moment. And just keep in mind that I am taking very seriously what everybody is saying. I am looking at every single little tiny bit of feedback that I can. Um, all of what everybody has been telling me it's all very important it does make a difference and i do value all of the input that has been coming in so far so if you haven't put input there is still time to give some feedback on it uh, go back and watch some of the previous videos and you get a better idea of uh, what we what changes might be coming along to the channel um but let's not worry about that for a minute. So if we're busy cultivating over here, we're combining as well. I've got this tractor sat here at the moment. And I'm going to go and collect me a little bit of grain, I think. So let's go back up over here. I'm thinking that we ought to get another job going at the same time. We haven't done this for a little while. We've got a bigger field now. So I think we'll make use of this bigger field. And we'll do a little bit of mowing. We get some mowing underway. I think that would be a good idea. And we can sort of uh, make the most of the, the, the new grass field that we've got. Get a load of bales out of it and, and see if we can do something with that. I'm not going to do too much in the way of baling for the next week or two because you're all going to be getting uh, more baling than you know what to do with, deal with. 
um, once the new DLC comes out. Now, we all know that. We're all expecting that. Everybody's going to be doing a load of bailing once the Anderson Group stuff comes out. Um, I certainly will. I'm really looking forward to that lot coming out, and I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic to be able to play around with it. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm just going to bring this down here. It's only 10,000 litres of oats. It's not a great deal. I'm going to whiz that down here, and I'm going to dump this 10,000 litres of oats into these horses right here. Because they don't have quite so much as the other lot. So tip that into there. If you have a look here, chickens are good. Chickens are good. They're okay. Uh, they're fine. They've got another few days. These horses right here, they're a little bit low on most of it. This is the new round of horses here. So we could do with a bit more going into that pen. This one down here needs hay and straw to be put in. Uh, well, actually, really, just the hay. We could just put some hay in there. Um... I'm thinking overall that we won't bother with it. And what I was considering was we've got some bales of hay, but do I not bother doing any more? And I have thought about that a little bit, and then I thought, well, no, actually, we're going to want the hay. And, yeah, we, we don't have that many bales at the moment, especially as our sheep are expanding. Um, and, and sort of the, the way we're doing this by doing lots of fast-forwarding of time I think it would be best if we make hay this time as well. Now, the next thing that we've got to take into account, I'm going to leave that one there. I've got another tractor down in the yard that we can stick onto that trailer if we want to. Um, so the next thing that really we want to be taking into account is... We are on the wrong currency, I've just noticed. So let's switch that over. We we'll go to miles, we we'll go to dollars, like that. Uh, in here... I want another tractor, right? I want a new tractor. We've got, at the moment, the Fent 700 Vario. And it goes up to about 200 horsepower, doesn't it? I think that's what we've got. Uh, engine set up, it goes up to 240 horsepower. It's not that great. i got to be honest. I, I, I was hoping for something a li with a little bit more oomph. Um, well, I say that. We, we, we didn't buy a bigger tractor, did we? This is what we need. We need a bigger tractor. Now, I was looking at these. A lot of people are wanting me to get a T8, um, which is certainly a really good option because it does allow you to really boost up the power that is available on the tractor. Um, but this one up here is available on the Mod Hub, that one right there, the Class Axion 900. And quite frankly, I think this thing looks absolutely beautiful. Right, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It's two hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars, so it's not the cheapest beastie that is available. Uh, this is three hundred and twenty horsepower starting off. It goes all the way up to four hundred and forty-five horsepower. Now, four hundred and forty-five horsepower—that's a fair beast, isn't it? Three fifty, three eighty, four ten, four four five—a four hundred and forty-five horsepower engine. Right there, that is a monstrous beastie. It looks very good. It's absolutely fantastic. I want, I, I want this to be a part of, of everything that we've got. We can go for Michelin or we can go for Trelborg. Um, I'm liking a look at those, actually. I think those look quite good. And then you get your standard wheel setups. You've got rear twins. Twins all together. Wide and weights, wide tires, wheel weights, standard. Nope. Okay, this one doesn't come with narrows. When you get this big, you don't apparently have narrows as an option. Design, chrome parts, or black parts. I see, right. It doesn't change a huge amount. Main color right there, we can go with a white class, we can go with a Black class tractor. Oh, that looks quite cool. Um, put that up. Okay, that's that's just freaky looking. Um, go with white on there, maybe, and then. Do, oh no, this this uh, it blanked it out. That that just looks weird. Definitely looks weird, and I don't like that either. That's too bright, so we could go with that. And then the rim color, you can put that down there. You can go with um, chrome. Black, white wheels, 
or other tradition. We would want the traditional red, and I don't, I don't like that as a look. I don't like that as a look with the design color on there. We go for the the black grid. We would either go for a uh, black like that, or we would stick with the traditional class. I think we would stick with the traditional class coloring like that. So it's three hundred thousand dollars. But anyway, that's what I would like to get. I've done enough messing around looking at that. It does look very cool. It's it it is a genuinely awesome looking beastie. Uh, but right now, what I'm searching for is... Ah, there we go, under mowers. Right, so we've got that one, and we've got that one. I'm thinking that we get one of those instead. We could always go with the Splendid Mow. That one goes out to 9 meters. This one here is only 8.4. So it's slightly further, but that's only $42,000, whereas this one over here is $49,000. That one's 3.2 meters. This one here is only 3.1 meters. So really, I think we need to get that one to be able to go with the Splendimo. So yeah, I'm thinking we just go up, we take, we sell that one back, and we swap it out for a Novacat X8 ED for 42 grand. We get a little bit back on it. I did want to buy a little bit more land, uh, but I don't think we'll worry about that just yet. What we'll do instead is we go and get the we get the mowers, we get the little bit more land, go and grab you, and uh, we get the mowers and we'll do some baling. Now we can make some bales or we could uh, do some silage bales and then wrap them up and then sell them. Now that's a, it is a time consuming process, it does earn us a little bit more money. But, like I said, it's it's time consuming, so which do we do? I'm thinking that we will go for just some hay that we keep, in which case... Well, I can't bring... Oh, I could bring both back, actually, except that... Right, what's the what's the turner that I've got at the moment? We've got that rake. I, well, I've never been that fond of that rake, but we know that. Um, that one right there is 8 point... No, we don't need to change that one out. That one's fine. Okay. Uh, so we got that. Let's go and get the mowers. And then we can decide what we want to do with everything. I am just going to check on... You know, I can check it like this. I can just I can just do that. And how are we doing? Field 8 there. We've got Helper D running up and down the field. He's doing a grand job. Absolutely brilliant. He's wonderful. And then over here, the chickens. We've got... A pallet that's slowly filling up. It's not doing a great deal. Not doing anything else there. Uh, so it's probably the same on all the pens. But remember, they are 10,000 litre pallets. So once we've got those pallets, going and selling them is going to be a lot easier. It's, it's definitely going to be... Uh, has a nearly full grain tank. Right, well, what we'll do is we'll stop you right there. And we will switch over to you. We will go and get our trailer. And... We will unload the next lot, so we've got more oats. We'll put all the oats that we can in for the horses, and then once we've done that, we will then worry about uh, anything else that we might want to do with the horses. Um, uh, worry about storing stuff. Um, um, we're not going to be. We're not going to have enough um, land here to be able to farm everything that we want to farm at the moment. So we already know that. That's, that's already a thing that we're going to have to deal with. So, one of the things that we will be doing is soon buying the more land so that we can start producing enough oats and wheat or barley. Is it wheat or barley? It doesn't really matter which one we go for. For our chickens and our horses. This is kind of quite crucial. I mean, we can go and buy the food. What are you doing? I see. While that was coming out, it stopped. It's a bit unusual. Didn't expect it to do that. Um, uh, of course, because it's so steep, it's not quite lining up properly with the combine on some of the land there. It's like struggling with it. See? Very, very steep ground here, so it's sort of leaving a stripe as well with the grain because, ju because of just how steep everything is. So it doesn't. It appears that the game doesn't actually like uh, really steep ground, and this surprises me. I didn't actually realise this was a thing um, that it sort of balked a bit at really steep ground. Never mind. That's all right. We we can work around that as well. We can work around most things. I've found, as long as we're careful. 
Uh, right, we'll leave you there. Please start engine. Yeah, we'll get to that. And you up here. Well, you're doing a grand job. You are. How long have you? 81%. Not long to go now. It's soon going to start going on to the short work on the field. And that's the bit that I'm wondering if it's going to even be able to cope with it. But look at all that cultivating that our hired help has done. Absolutely fantastic. Right. I want to go back up to the... I want to go to the shop and I want to sell this mower and I want to buy the other one and bring it back. So I'm whizzing in through here. Round there. Just look at the guy in the seat. I love that bit. The, like, the, the way that he sways from side to side as you go along. He's, he's got a very, very smooth ride. I've never driven a tractor that's got that kind of smooth ride on it, right? That sort of started to become more the norm after I stopped uh, working in agriculture and so it's not something that I ever really got to take part in it's, it's not something I ever personally got to enjoy all that much or well I didn't get to enjoy at all not, not like the console type seat like that that um, that was it came sort of after my time $13,448 right there. Yes, thank you very much. We will enter our tablet over here and we'll do it through. We'll do it via our tablet. Even though we're at the dealership, we're still going to place the order via the tablet just to impress him or confuse him. One or the other. Uh, buy right there. There's no other options with it. Yes, I want to purchase that. One of my favorite mowers, the other one being the actual self propelled beastie. And let's go. We've got the co the combine is now done, so I think actually we'll get this one back. I'll hook these up. We get this one back to the farm, and once I've got this back to the farm, then we will uh, deal with the combine bit. But uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this back to the farm, get the other mower on, so that we've got the front mower going. Let's bring you around that way. I'm hoping that this tractor can actually run these mowers. That's the next thing. I haven't actually double-checked to make sure that this one's got the required oomph under the bonnet to be able to even do this. So long as it does, we will put this one going. Well, I'll, I think I'll do once around the outside of the whole field. And then we'll set some hired help going with this. And then um, we can then go and get the combine and we can finish combining the oats. Deal with that bit. And this one will carry on, and then we can go and get a hay turner onto the field of hay and start rollicking through it like that. Everything will be absolutely grand. Big question, big question, is do I go for more chicken pens just yet? I'm not sure. One thing I'm going to start looking out for is another autoload trailer for empties. Because if we've got one for empties... We'll be able to do something with it might just be a bit quicker for loading all of these up. The, at the moment, the time-consuming bit is not... Um, well, the, the time-consuming bit for the whole process is going to be sort of playing around with the empty pallets. And if we can find a way to do that faster... I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to switch that one off. I want to do that there. I probably should have lowered it down first. And then we go over this way. Now, does this tractor have reverse drive? I don't think it does. No. This one doesn't have a reverse drive function. So, unfortunately, we can't reverse drive it. So, we'll grab you in there. If it did have a reverse drive function, we'd be able to use these mowers in my absolute favoritist way ever to use these mowers, which is reverse drive. I think it's absolutely awesome using that feature. It genuinely is. It's genuinely amazing and brilliant. Uh, so I start you up and I start you up as well. And then I go control V and lower you down. And then the other ones at the back, they lower down as well. And everything is all tickety-boo and hunky-dory and wonderful and amazing. So I will go whizzing off through here. Is the hired help going to tell me that there's a tree stump right in there? I'm not doing anything with that bit at the moment because... Um, well, basically, I don't want to. Um, long story short, I, I, I just don't want to. And if I go up through here like this. Yes, we do leave a little bit behind on the corner. We'll come back and deal with that in a bit. Uh, if I come up with one single pass on this end, am I going to be able to turn round on the ends of the field? 
I'm not sure. I think I will. It's turning on the other end that I'm more concerned about. I think turning on the other end is going to prove quite interesting. So I will go like that, and then I'll go Control V. And I'll lift that bad boy up there, like that. And then I will Control V again. And just do that, just along that edge a little bit. And then again. There we go. Right, and now what I'll do is I will bring this down here. I'll do a second run, just down, just on this end. I'm going to worry about doing the other end, but just on this end, like that. I'm not going to worry about the sides or anything. That's going to give me plenty of room for the hired help to be turning around on the ends of the field without sort of getting hung up on the, uh, anything else. Plus, we get a nice lot of grass off of this. Look at that. Look at that. Loads of it. Absolutely loads of it. I can bring you back over here and also lower that down there. Like that. And then swivel round. I may as well do a third pass up across here as I'm here. There we go. Perfect. So that one will run up there. And then once I get up to the top, I can go once across the top and sort of finish around the bottom. And then leave the hired help running, and I'm hoping it will be able to deal with it all. There shouldn't be anything in the way that's going to cause us any issues. I'm hoping. Also, it's going to be interesting to see how well it copes with this mower setup. I don't know what it's like with this at the moment. I've not actually... Um, oops. Okay, I didn't want to press that. I wanted to press that. There. Control V. Control C doesn't do anything other than put you back into cab. And we lower that one down like that. And away we go. Right, now we find out how good our terraforming was as we sort of manufactured this part of the field up here. And did we judge it right with the ploughing as well? We're going to have a substantial amount of ploughing to do once we start buying up the fields up the top. Because we're going to need to be ploughing those fields all together. We're going to make one huge, great big field eventually. Uh, so if I get to there like that. And I am going I'm going to sh um, shunt a little bit. I know I've got the mowers on the ground. It's not ideal really to have the mowers on the ground and be double mowing. It, um, it doesn't do the grass a huge amount of good. Uh, especially if you're making hay. If you're making silage, it doesn't matter so much. But if you're making hay... Um, you want the longer stalks and going over it twice with the mower that cuts all the stalks in half and that ends up causing you some it, it can cause you some issues uh, it's not like major issues but it can lead to um, like bits of dusty hay which aren't quite so good and you know a few, a few other tiny little problems like that um, it's, it's nothing major to worry about though. we're not going to concern ourselves with it now so if I press H right there oh wow Okay. I didn't want you to go all the way over. So if, if you're going that way, you, this this is good. This is going to mess me up. This is going to seriously mess me up. So I'm going to come around like that. There. We're up, right. Okay. I I will press H on here, and then go across there. That's that's where we want to go. So if I do that, there. That'll lower down. That'll go in. Go to there. Across there. Now what? Hmm. It does pick up and sort of come out of the crop for a little while. But it does also cause, like, it's when it turns around on the headland that it can do some funny things. So it's got to there. How well is it going to do its turning? Is it going to... No, it's going to background. Okay, that's a good start. That's a very good start. But it's how well it does this bit right here. So we, we get to there. It's going to... It goes in the lowers there. It's the next bit that I've... Yeah. It's going to do that right. Oh, it's done it. Oh, it's, it's actually done it. It's done it fairly well. All right. I'm reasonably impressed with that. That'll carry on through there. And then it stops and it lifts up the front one. Then it goes on a little bit further and it stops and it lifts up the back one. This is the bit. When you're on an angle... Right, he's going to turn round now. He should be fine with the turn. That's not an issue. 
But what I found that it was doing was it doesn't like quite come back and it does leave little bits or it goes up too far. Leaves little bits so it'll get to there and it'll drop that one down but then it'll go too far with the mower on one side. Or maybe it's not going to do that. Now that I've said that that's what it does, it's not going to do it. It's the last thing that it's ever, ever going to do. Just to sort of prove me wrong. Right. No. Uh, I want to start. Like that. Back you up a little bit. Lower you down. Oh. It didn't actually do any more of the crop. Right? It went all the way out to the end and then just gave up. So I didn't like it. So what we'll do is we'll run down here. We will grab these couple of little slices. And then we'll spin the combine round and we'll go and finish off the crop that we've got up there. So there's a little bit down there. There's the bit there over the hump. Right there. I don't think there is any more down here so we can anchor that one around like that take you on up through here I could probably just put the hired help going for some of this you know I'm not going to I'm going to go like this and I'm just going to manually do this piece here not all of it possibly but what I want to do is I want to manually just go around the outside a little bit right here. So bring that up through there, round, and go and tidy up those little bits down over there just while the mower is busy working. And then we can run back down there and we can go and check on that mower, see how that one's getting on. He's whizzing across our field quite nicely, actually. He's doing a good job of it. The, the wider width on the mower is definitely going to make life easier for us. Um, and, yeah... Hey, or I'm still torn. I'm still genuinely torn on this. I think we'll turn it into hay. I think we will turn it into hay. We won't mess around with doing wrapping and stuff like that um, because there's a load of bales to come in another few weeks. So I'm not going to go messing around with a, a wrapper today and we will just do it as bales of hay and then we can stack them up off to the side of the field somewhere and those are then done and ready for... Contract on field eight, finished. <gasps> Ooh, nice. Right. Let's go to that. Let's go to you. You've stopped. You've, you've gone all the way up there. I'm going to stop you right there. This needs to be returned anyway, so I just literally need to collect $8,100. We're done. Okay. If I go to there a minute and then go back over to this one. Have we got another nice easy one like that? We've uh, we got baling, we got harvesting, and we've got fertilizing. Like fertilizing on field ten, right there. No, I'm, I'm not going to worry about any more for a minute. So we got another eight grand. There is thirty-seven thousand dollars. That's looking pretty good. Are we going to get like a plant? Oh, sowing on field twenty-two. That's with wheat. No, I don't want to do it with that. Is there any more on field eight? Wondering if we'd have like a field eight planting job or something. No. Right, okay, we won't worry about that. You are just being difficult because of the pallets. Yeah, okay, fine. I was busy singing your praises to everybody that was watching, and now you've you've gone and done that. Right, fine. Let's we'll start you up again. We'll start you right there and then lower down your back mower and You're away. And it's done that hump bit there okay this time. Whether it'll do it okay on its next pass remains to be seen. Um, let me quickly go to the combine over here. So what was I doing here? I'd spun it round a little bit. I'll keep half an eye on that mower. I'll bring you back up this way. That mower, he's still doing his turning round. Actually, he's probably going to get hung up on the rock that we've got up there. Hung up on the rock is going to cause trouble for that. Never mind. Yeah, help me is blocked by an object. I thought it would. He'd get hung up on there and he wouldn't like it. So we'll go to you there and I'll press H. So that one carries on there. Then we can go back this way and... <laughs> when he got hung up on the rock, he did that properly, didn't he? Right. Bless his cottons. He's now unemployed and looking for employment elsewhere. He's, he's, he's going to go and find another employer somewhere else. He'll be fine. He'll get along just fine. He managed to get blag his way in here and get himself a job. How are you blocked by an object? 
What could you possibly... He's blocked by the tree behind us. That's what it is. But F is blocked. Uh, control V. No. Okay. I, I kind of pushed it forward and then I switched off the hired help and decided that it was hired help anyway. I'm not really sure what it did there. To be honest, I'm not even sure if the game knows what it did there. But the important thing is that we survived with no casualties um right over that bit so we've got a little tiny tiny bit of grass that didn't cut but overall it's not really had much of an effect now this should go all the way up to the end then turn around and come whizzing back down through yes he will excellent right so now we can go back to our combine up here you're apparently finished i'm starting to have serious questions about the integrity of the staff that are working here they seem to be taking a lot of shortcuts that really aren't necessary. I mean, look, they've, they've come up through here. They've said that it's finished. It's obviously not finished. He's gone up to the other end of the field. He's turned around before he's reached the end of the field. I think we need to sit down and have a long discussion with some of our... Um, I, I suspect that, you know, the long-term staff, they've become jaded over time and that they think that they have more authority than they actually do. So we need to just gently remind them that they are, in fact, just employees and the fact of the matter is they will no longer be employees if they continue along this path. It's, like, it's just not acceptable. We cannot afford to run a business like this, okay? I'm trying to make hundreds of thousands of dollars off the backs of their work whilst paying them as little as possible. I don't know why they can't understand this and just get on with their work. Um, <laughs> have you ever met an employer that's actually honest? Like, honestly, have you, have you ever actually met one who's honest and says to you, look, I'm trying to make the maximum amount of money possible. In order to do that, I've got to pay you as little as possible and charge everybody else for your work as much as I can get away with. No, you don't. But this is what everybody, the whole world does this. Everybody knows that, the, that, that they do this. But if an employer was to actually sit you down and tell you that to your face, you'd get all upset with them. And it's, it's a strange thing about the world. We all know that this is happening, right? That this, is what, this is how everybody operates. Gonna pay you as little as possible so I make as much money as possible. And yet nobody ever actually says it. Or if they do, they're considered to be like a, a, a really, really genuinely nasty, horrible person, and the whole world um like alienates them for it. You know, a little bit of honesty there. That is it, it, but it is what everybody's doing. So I I I d I don't get it. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be honest with my employees. All right, we will be absolutely honest with our employees here. We are paying you as little as we can possibly get away with so that we can make as much money as possible. I want to be a millionaire, and your hard work is going to help me along that path. That's all I'm saying on the subject. If you don't like it, that's fine. I don't mind if you don't like it. There are plenty of other places that you can go and work. Actually, at the moment, it's an employer's market. So there aren't plenty of other places you can go and work. I'm one of the very few. So if you don't like it, you can either put up with it or you can become unemployed. Which would you rather? I don't mind. I really don't. You, you, you can choose. This is entirely your choice. See? Ah, there we go. Look, he's doing that little thing where he's going on just a little tiny bit too far and not quite cutting everything properly. But we got a lot of hay in this field. Right? We've actually got a decent quantity of hay in this field. It's, it's looking quite cool. There, we're going to grab that little bit there. On you go. Right, we'll let him carry on there. What did I want to do next? I've got that bit there. We'll go and have a quick look at these chickens and just see what we've got. See, that one's not quite empty there. They don't seem to just fill the same pallet. They seem to, like, chop and change the pallets that they're filling. And this is the one thing I think is going to make this a little bit difficult. That one looks full. That one doesn't. Uh, this one is one of the older ones, so that one may or may not be full. So we've got 10,000 litres of eggs right there. That looks like it's... Well, 10,000 is ready to go. And right here, see, we've got two pallets right there. 
that are both filling. I'm hoping that just one of them is the one that's actually going to do the filling. And then over here, see now I started on that one over there. That's miles away. I was told originally don't block the first spawn point. If you block the first spawn point, you might have some problems. So I've blocked the first spawn point on all of them now. Right, all of them there, they, they, they've all got the first spawn point blocked. Uh, does this, except for this one. This one doesn't. So we'll see if that makes any difference to the overall performance of all of those uh, egg pens. That one up there, I'm not sure what that one's doing. And... Okay, we are getting through this field at a phenomenal rate. I didn't expect... Like, these mowers are really good. You can always... you can Mowing is done at a, a decent rate of speed anyway. I, I really like the, the speed that it does mow through all the fields. Uh, but uh, this, this is getting through it at an impressive rate. In fact, so much so... I'm not going to worry about that little bit that's stuck up down there. I know that we've got... Because that's, like, on the really rough patch. So we can't do a huge amount about it. I know that we've got a bit more over there that we want to deal with, but I also want to get started on turning the hay. So in order to get started on it, we'll go to you. This one's got 33,000 litres of wood chips in it, which are going to stay in it for now. We'll come back to those. And we'll take our little Fiat, little beastie over here. This is the one that we're going to do the turning of the hay with. When I was younger, whenever we were making hay, um, the... We always used to use the small old tractors for doing the turning. The the one bigger tractor on the farm was, I mean, it was only a 70 horsepower tractor, so technically it was um, smaller than this one. The small tractors, they were like uh, in the 35 to 50 horsepower range. And those were the ones that we put on the hay turners. Has he stopped? No, 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 he's, he's coming around. He's, he's going to turn and he's, he's going to carry on with it. Fantastic. Okay, that's brilliant. I could go and just tidy that bit up a minute. I'm not going to because I just want to see that it um, does the full turnaround properly. Oh. Okay, it's not going to do the full turnaround properly. So what we will do is we will just very quickly grab this little strip down here. Like that. Down there. And slice that bit off. And then I can whiz round and I can put the mowers going. And then I can come up here and I can go control V and lower them all down like that. And then go up through here. So for whatever reason, it does it sometimes though, doesn't it? With the hired help, it lines itself up ready for the next run and then just stops. Decides that it doesn't like what the next run looks like and it, and, and, then, and then just gives up. So nope, nope, not having it. I'm not going there. So yeah, we had this... Ooh, it's just like that, yeah. We had, um, we, we didn't really use the bigger tractors, we used the smaller tractors. So, uh, I had like a little 40 horsepower, I think it was a John Deere 1100, was it? Might have been a John Deere 1070 or something like that. Little tiny two-wheel drive thing. Uh, it was a really small one. Fantastic little tractor. I used to like driving that one around the fields. That was quite good fun doing the turning in that one. It was normally the yard scraper tractor in the winter. Um, so you did all of the yard scraping with that one through the winter. And then in the summer, that's the one that was put on to one of the... Just one of the turners. We had uh, we had two turners, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we did. Um, so you had two hay turners and one of them was put on to the John Deere, the little John Deere. And then we also had an old International tractor. Now, the International was actually like a 60-horsepower tractor. It was it was a... Um, for the area and for the size of the farm, it was a reasonably powerful tractor. Um, we'd Very often, we'd put the small baler on that tractor, and it would cope with it just fine. It, I mean, it always used to do that. It was an older tractor, so as the tractors get older, they get a little bit weaker, and generally we tried to put the small baler onto the the biggest tractor on the farm which was a John Deere 2650 and I realized that by today's standards even on small scale farms a John Deere 2650 at about 75 horsepower is a relatively small tractor that farm that I used to work on to do that um, their biggest tractor now is a 220 horsepower um, tractor because they also do a bit of contracting out. So they have a big baler that they use to go and do the contracting and stuff like that. 
Right, I'm going to just leave him there a second. I'm going to bring this one over and I will cancel the hired help and I will do this last little bit myself. Uh, there and press G and then go again. Go like that. Oops. What did I do there? Alright, lower you down. Um, but yeah, it would... So we had a 70 horsepower tractor, or 72 horsepower, whatever it was, the John Deere 2650. That was the most powerful tractor that we had on the farm. And then the rest of the tractors were smaller ones. There was two international tractors, actually. One was about 60 horsepower, and the other was smaller still. That was about uh, 40, uh, no, 50 horsepower, was it? I think the other one was about 50 horsepower. And then the little John Deere, that wouldn't have been more than about 40 to 45 horsepower, would be my guess. But I, I don't actually know exactly um, the, the power or specification. I don't even remember what the, um, the full number of that tractor was. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm going to gotta have to find that out. But, yeah, the, the two international tractors, one was definitely bigger than the other. So the 60-odd horsepower one, that was usually the one that was used out in the fields anyway because the, the second one, the slightly smaller one, uh, that was a loader tractor. So it was absolutely battered to pieces. So we didn't de generally use that one out in the fields. Um, and by that point, it wasn't really being used in the yard either. It, would, it had been... You know, you know what an old load tractor was like? You didn't have any cushioning or dampening effects of anything anywhere. And this tractor had, you know, it, it, it was falling apart the seams. The International and the John Deere are both still working tractors now, 25 years later from um, the period of time that I'm talking about. And, well, 20 to 25 years. Um, so, you know, I, I, it wasn't just like a one-off. It, it was for a period of time. So 20 years later, um, the both the John Deere's, they're still working. And the larger international, that one still works as well. They're still used. Uh, not anywhere near as much as they used to be, but they are still used. The other international one, the, the one that used to be used as a loader tractor, that's now just a sorry remnant in a hedge somewhere. It's uh, you know it's it's rusted away completely. That tractor will never start again. That that one's that one is now gone to the great tractor graveyard in the sky, and so it will never come back. And we didn't really use it very much then. It was used a little bit, but not much at all. It was um it was on its way out back then. Uh, we used loadalls at the time, and it was a good. 10 to 15 years before when I was doing this stuff that the load that that international tractor was last really used as the full-time loader beastie on the farm um so it, it sort of that one's day had come that well that one's day had arrived but using a little small tractor like this to do the hay turning definitely takes me back that's there's something that I did for quite a long time and I spent a lot of hours and I used to really like the small tractors, mainly because none of the tractors we had had air conditioning, so it would be quite hot. The small tractors, though, whereas the big tractor, it was glass windows all the way round. You could open them, and you could open the door a bit as well. The smaller tractors were a lot better, because you could open both the doors, and you could open them right the way out properly, instead of just opening them a little bit. Plus, um... Half of them didn't have uh, all the windows on anyway. The windows were just broken. Um, the John Deere, though, that was the best one. Because the John Deere didn't have any doors, right? It had no doors at all. It didn't have a back window. It did have two small side windows. The great thing about those two small side windows was they were so grubby and dirty that they didn't act like windows and make things hotter for you. So all you had was this lovely little box with a bit of shade on it that um, you could appreciate as you went round in the blazing sunshine turning hay. And if you're in the John Deere 2650 with this big glass dome around the front of it, it was one of the older John Deeres with the rounded front on the cab. Um, that was not so good. That was definitely not so good. You, you could turn the blower on, but all that was doing was shifting warm air around the cab. It certainly wasn't going to cool you down. Right, you were not getting any cooling effect from it whatsoever. It was just blasting warm air at you. 
uh, and of course you were turning hay so that warm air was beautifully laden with thick dust so if you had the blower pointing at you uh, all you ended up doing was coating yourself in dust so by the end of the day uh, you were literally completely black from head to toe uh, it was it just wasn't as good there were no blower the, the, the blowers on the smaller tractors they weren't an option there, there were no such things the only advantage to using the John Deere uh, the big John Deere over the small one or the international was the fact that the John Deere had a radio all right, the John Deere had a radio. Now, it didn't have much of radio. You could only get long wave radio. FM, it, it was either medium wave or long wave. Uh, you did, so you had uh, long wave radio Atlantic 252. That was about the only station that you could ever pick up. And a lot of farmers all over the country will be familiar with that particular station because that's the only one that for many many years it was literally the only station that any farmer could ever pick up because the tractors all came with a really rather poor radio and all you had was this long wave radio you couldn't get an fm radio um or you could get an fm radio but it generally didn't work because the aerials were so poor these days is altogether different right you, you can get your radios to work and you can listen to um tapes and and all sorts but I'm talking 20 years ago, and it was it was a different ball game back then. I don't even know if um, that long wave radio station uh, even exists anymore. It may have it may have gone now. It may have gone to the great radio station in the sky. Um, but back in those days, that's what I used to listen to. If I was in the big tractor, uh, if I was in the small tractor, you you yeah no radios. There, there, there was that. Uh, you didn't have any working electronics at all. They were really old tractors. So working electronics were not a thing, right? You, 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 it wasn't going to be an option. You knew that before you even got into it. So you didn't have lights. You didn't have wipers. For the most part, you didn't have windows or doors. Um, there, there, there was literally anything that required electric, uh, any kind of electrical surge, any kind of electrical power whatsoever. That wasn't going to be happening in your tractor. So if you wanted music, you had to sing. And that was about all you could do. There was no other option. It was great, though. I still love those tractors. Even though, you know, it, it does get a little bit tedious when you're doing long work and um, you, you haven't got a radio or anything. Because it was a load of small fields and the turner had to be folded up between every field. It was absolutely brilliant. You'd, you'd go into the field... You'd get under the shade of the trees. You weren't doing it in the blazing sunshine. Then you'd have to get out and manually unfold the um, hay turner. It was one of it, one of those that it didn't work on hydraulics. You had to manually unfold it all and set everything up. It would take you between five and ten minutes to do that. In the shade, sunny day with the, um, the hay all cut. It's beautiful smell in the field. It was absolutely gorgeous. And then... Um, plus you got the views out around you and you, you just you would work steady as you were doing that bit there was no rush you would just work steady and you'd swap that over and then you'd get back into the traction and you go and turn the field that would probably take you about an hour and then you stop you fold it all back up five to ten minutes move on to the next field so you'd be going along really narrow small lanes all shaded over with um, the trees uh, sometimes it would just be a drop from one field to the next, so it would be a very quick transition. Uh, other times you'd be moving from one block of fields to the next, and you have to go along several, um, you know, possibly up to half a mile of um, really small, bumpy old tracks. So you have to go quite slowly. And it was really nice, really pleasant. It was a really, I used to love doing that. And then you get out into the next field, and you get everything unfolded, and away you go again. And the only really tedious bit was kind of doing some of the bigger fields that would take you an hour and a half to two two hours to get completed with the turner um that was the bit that i didn't enjoy quite so much i used to like the small fields because by the time you were thinking about getting bored with it you'd finished and you were able to hop out and do the whole changing over and moving fields again um anyway i've rattled on about that for long enough we have run out of time for today's episode so if you've enjoyed this one then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it and please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.